Welcome to the Simply Authentic Podcast, where we hope to embolden you with discipline, personal growth, and abundance to live your most authentic life. Welcome back to the Simply Authentic Podcast. I'm Tanya Murfin. And I'm Angie Mullings. And today, we're going to talk about sort of a big topic. A um, couple of things we're going to cover. First of all, Tanya and I went to 417 um, Biz Think Summit. Yes. And spent the day at that. It's a great event. We're going to give you some takeaways on that. But then we're going to talk about economic development and regionalism yes. and why it's important to everyone in 417 land. And we're going to try to break that down into some bite-sized pieces so that if you have no experience with economic mm-hmm. development or regionalism, hopefully at the end of this, you will kind of have a better idea of, of why it's important to you. Exactly. And why you should be listening. Yeah. So let's talk about the Think Summit first. Yeah. So a couple of the speakers that I really enjoyed – Um, Three different people I'll mention here. Granita Latham, the superintendent of SPS, Springfield Mm -hmm. Public School System. Mm -hmm. And her speech that morning was about communication. And we Mm -hmm. just did a podcast on communication. And And she's also been a guest. She has been a guest, yes. Uh, Look her and Danielle Kincaid up. We talked about SPS and their involvement in Springfield schools. Her speech that morning I thought was really poignant as far as communication because we all are trying to communicate something, Mm -hmm. right? You and Mm -hmm. I are trying to communicate something on this podcast. Right. Um, In our jobs, we communicate with buyers and sellers and other realtors every day. Mm -hmm. And we've learned with our experience how important it is to be on top of your game, to understand the game, right? to make sure you're educated, whatever you're talking about. And she used the word transparency. When she came in Mm -hmm. to Springfield Public Schools, she talked about how she wanted, she felt like whatever the setting was before she got there had not really been transparent with the parents Mm -hmm. and with the public. Mm -hmm. And she wanted the perception of her leadership to be, I'm going to tell you the hard things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you all the good things. But I'm going to be transparent. Right. And I loved that that kicked off the event because it spoke to me. Um, she talked about being accountable mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. owning up to when things are bad and when there's Absolutely. been a mistake made uh, in leadership or in a, just a circumstance. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just took a lot from it just because of the business that we're in. Right. We are constantly dealing with a new situation. Absolutely. And since last week's episode was about communication, that is our right. third pillar of peak performance. That's just, it's such an important piece of being able to be at the top of your game, to yeah. be the best leader, to have the best performance you can possibly have. Communication is vital. And that's why we're breaking that particular episode in, up into two segments. Right. Yes. So, so if you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen yes. to last week's episode. Yes, please do that. And then Hal Donaldson, the CEO mm-hmm. and creator, founder, founder mm-hmm. of help me out convoy of hope convoy of hope yes Yes. i was going to say hope something and that wasn't (laughs) right convoy of hope that organization has such a huge presence Mm -hmm. around the united states around the world um and to think that how Mm -hmm. came up with the idea and the concept and i want to say something that he said in the interview and he um Logan Aguirre had interviewed him offsite mm-hmm. because he couldn't actually be at the Think, at Summit. The Think Summit that mm-hmm. morning. And one of the things he said that really stood out to me was, do the next thing that God puts mm-hmm. in front of you. Yeah, I wrote that down too. I loved it. Yeah. And that's how the whole premise of Convoy of Hope was started based on that just simple idea. Huh. And to think that that is in our own backyard, which really is a key component of what we're going to talk about in mm-hmm. terms of economic development and, it is. and um, regionalism. So, yes. yeah. yeah, that was very inspiring. It was. Love that. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that stood out to me was the panel towards mm-hmm. the 
afternoon mm-hmm. that the city utility CEO was on. Mm-hmm. The help me out with Dan, this. Dan Ryder. Yes, Dan. Cardinals. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a ball of energy, and I always oh, love yeah. to see him. Yes. Yeah. The it was a panel of three people or four I think people. So, I think it was three. Yeah. And they were kind of giving a glimpse into some of the development in Springfield. Mm-hmm. So it kind of goes mm-hmm. along with our economic development podcast today Mm -hmm. that we're going to creep into exciting things happening in Springfield. So the Springfield Cardinals Stadium was bought by the city of Springfield Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago now or last year. I think it just finalized last year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, It hadn't been very long. Yes. And then Gary from CU talked Mm -hmm. about the Springfield Lake Project Mm -hmm. and the vision that is out there which is amazing. If you right. haven't looked that up online, you should. And we are going to feature him on a podcast coming mm-hmm. up in May. Mm-hmm. So he has a really uh, fun, unique story to tell about his background with CU and talk about the Lake Springfield project. So I was really inspired that afternoon that of the Think Summit that we have a lot going on we have here. A lot going on, and I don't think a lot of people understand that. You know, I feel like it's our jobs as realtors to know what's going on here locally, mm-hmm. but there's so much it's hard to keep up with. And it if is. you don't stay on top of it, or you don't know where to go to find um, the what what's happening out there. Mm-hmm. And we're going to give you some of those resources, but it it is hard to keep up. Um, you know, the Springfield Cardinals have now announced that they're going to have their first concert, yeah. um, outdoor concert. So, you know, Dan's message was buy your ticket, even if you don't like country music. <laughs> uh, but Adam Wainwright is going to be the first performer to have a concert there. And he was obviously a, a former player. So there's great things happening. There's yeah. lots of ideas turning out there. And we hope to inspire you to really be a part of it. Yeah. Um. I liked everything you said there, Tanya, and I, too, to, had had those same takeaways. Um, if you've never been, just to give you another idea of, of the type of conversations that go on at the Think Summit, um, Tom Douglas was there with J-Mark. He talked about the future of AI, and mm-hmm. woo, and, and we hope Amazing. to have him on at, in a future episode as mm-hmm. well. Um, Richard Bliss. I really learned a lot about LinkedIn that mm. I didn't know oh about. Gosh. It is not no anything clue. like yeah. the other face, the other um, social media platforms. No. So it, it was really enlightening to hear him, it and really it has was. really changed my attitude towards LinkedIn yeah. and and challenged me to sort of do things a little differently yeah. there. Yeah. And in addition to that, there's some other very inspiring stories like Samora um, Stogner really talked about overcoming her challenges Mm -hmm. as a teenage mom and coming from nothing, essentially. Mm -hmm. Johnny McNeil talked about a lot about perspective. He gave us all a lesson on perspective. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things that you can learn. The whole point of the day is to challenge us to think, Mm -hmm. to think Mm -hmm. differently, to engage with people we might not ordinarily run into. Right. And I think that's what it has done for us, Tanya, in terms of, I know you learned something there that, that you didn't know much about in terms of economic development. We're mm-hmm. going to, we're going to talk about, about that and, um, and why it's important, but there, there are tons of takeaways. It doesn't matter what business you're in, mm-hmm. what organization you lead. I think there's something, so I would encourage everyone to check that out next year. It's usually um, in the first quarter Mm -hmm. um, towards the end of March, typically, or sometime in March. So um, be watching for that, and it's it's worth your time to go. And it is a whole day event. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well worth it, though. Yeah. Learned so much. Yeah. So we're going to now edge into our second topic which we mentioned in Mm -hmm. the 417 Think Summit topic, which is talking about economic development and regionalism Mm -hmm. and what that means. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to very eloquently say that I felt a little dumb on Mm -hmm. the subject. Mm -hmm. Still do, but I've Mm -hmm. learned a lot more. So it's, it's 
honestly, not a conversation that I felt like I had anything to offer in. Mm -hmm. So if you told me you wanted to get together and talk about what Springfield's doing with economic development, I don't have anything to offer to that because I, I honestly didn't know. And I want to read here in a second something from the Chamber Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce website that I thought really explains economic development and it explains what the purpose of the chamber is. And we're going to get into the weeds of all of this in further episodes, but yes. we wanted to lay the foundation for our listeners who, if you're like me, and you just skimmed over that paragraph about economic development because you don't know enough about it, you know, you know the concept, but you don't have anything to offer in the conversation. I hope that you will at least take something away from this podcast that will make you get on the Springfield Chambers website. hmm And they have tons of links to why you should live in Springfield, Missouri, why you should stay in Springfield, Missouri to live in on city utilities website. The same thing. Mm -hmm. I learned so much by our conversation with Gary Gibson, which is coming up in May Mm -hmm. as a podcast and learned so much online about city utilities and what their role is other than just providing Utilities. Not just about turning on the lights. It is not. It is not. It's so much more. So, Angie, if you'll let me read this really quickly. So, again, this is from the Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce website. So, what is their role? Their role is to attract new investment and job creation. The chamber serves as the first point of contact for businesses considering relocation or expansion. Within Springfield, Greene County area, chamber staff work with peers at the City of Springfield, City Utilities, and Greene County as part of Springfield's Partnership for Economic Development. Within the 10-county region, so we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. the region, Mm -hmm. chamber staff work with cities, counties, local chambers of commerce, and utility providers as part of the Springfield Regional Economic Partnership. Mm -hmm. SREP. Marketed externally, SREP highlights unique assets and business advantages of the Springfield region aimed at attracting new investment to Southwest Missouri. Yes. Okay. So that tells the listener what? It tells the listener that, that in terms of economic development, the way they call them site selectors. So if I own Toyota, Mm-hmm. I have a list of people that are my site selectors. They work for me and other entities, but they're called site selectors. And they make visits to communities mm-hmm. to decide where Toyota's next plant is going to be. Okay, And they whittle that down based on these site visits that they, they come to. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem, and this, is, this conversation, Tanya, has been going on for over 20 years. Right. So this is not a new concept. It's just sort of evolved, and now it's coming to the forefront a little bit more, and we're going to talk about why here in just a little bit. But just to give our listeners a little background, the SREP, which is what you mentioned there, Mm -hmm. used to be called OREP, which was Ozarks Regional Economic Partnership, because way back 20, 25 years ago, Jim Anderson, who was then president and CEO of the Um, Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce, and Todd Parnell, who was a local lender, commercial lender, and a few other people got together and said, we have something great to offer in this area, but we have to work together. Mm -hmm. It can't be Springfield. Mm -hmm. It can't be Nixa. It can't be Republic. We have to market ourselves as a region Mm -hmm. to make us more appealing to these site selectors. The other thing is, is that for a while city leaders from Springfield were going after these people and city leaders from Nixa were going after. So they were hearing from a lot of different people. And rather than try to, in order to make it easier for these site selectors to understand our region, they decided it would be important for us to join forces and not everybody going after the same company or the same business all the time. Right. So that's the piece that is business attraction that is part of just just one little leg, if you will, mm-hmm. of economic development. We need to bring industries here. That's how Amazon got here. That's right. Amazon got here because um, of a regional effort and they selected. Here's the other thing. If you work with a 10 county region and you're just touting the region, 
the site selector is probably going to look at a site in Republic, a site in Branson, a site in Springfield, sure. and you don't know where they're going to choose. Right. And But they usually have very specific requirements like it's got to be next to rail it's got to be next to a major highway or thoroughfare so they've got these they come with these already parameters mm-hmm. if you will and they're going to go to those communities that fit within those parameters mm-hmm. they're not going to look at everything right. so they're coming very intentional they'll right. spend a day or two here and their main contact yes was the chamber and s rep is housed underneath the chamber mm-hmm. and um and therefore gets its lead from the chamber and the people that work in the economic development um, area at the chamber. Okay. So hopefully that helps with a little bit of background. Right. And really, <clears throat> that is just one of several legs of economic development is business attraction. Agree. And I'm going to add to that here something else from the Springfield Chamber of Commerce. There. Another point on their website is to foster a strong and skilled workforce is that is key to economic development success. So mm-hmm. kind of what you were just talking about, businesses choosing to come here or not. Mm-hmm. The Chamber's efforts center around growing a robust talent pipeline from development to retention and attraction. Our staff team manages programs that connect high school students and teachers Mm -hmm. with career information, encourage college students to consider staying in the Springfield area, Mm -hmm. help engage and retain young professionals age 21 to 40, and attract new talent through a comprehensive relocation website. These programs, in combination with the Chamber's advocacy efforts around education and training, work together to enhance the skills, knowledge, and abilities of a growing population to meet the current and future needs of our community. Right. So, well said, Chamber of Commerce, but that ties in to your example of Amazon being a large corporation that decided to come here and place themselves in Republic mm-hmm. to begin with, mm-hmm. and us using our many colleges and educational facilities we have here mm-hmm. to try to encourage the students that we educate here to right. stay here. Right. How much better can we make the Springfield region mm-hmm. to make them want to get married here, raise mm-hmm. their family, mm-hmm. buy a home, mm-hmm. make their career path start right here in Springfield. Right, right. Probably the most critical piece of that whole puzzle, Tanya, is workforce development mm-hmm. um, because another criteria of these site selectors when they're coming to look at our area is what, what kind of workforce do you have? Mm-hmm. How many people, how far are we going to have to try to attract our workforce in order to have the number of employees that we need. And we all know that workforce has been a struggle. If you hire in any capacity anywhere, actually in the country, but we obviously have this problem in Southwest Missouri, if you hire in any capacity, you know what a challenge it has been to find good employees. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Yes. So, yes. So the answer to those are OTC with all of their many, many programs that they Mm -hmm. offer that are not just for your college options. So you've got some options for everyone. Mm -hmm. How important that piece is to um, economic development and workforce Mm -hmm. um, retention is critical. Mm -hmm. And that's why Hal Higdon, the president of OTC, has been at that table all the time, Mm -hmm. all along the way, because that's vital. Mm -hmm. Um, Programs like GoCaps, which is something that was alluded to there, it didn't Mm -hmm. tell what it was, but that is the program that connects high school students with potential um, opportunities for employment Mm -hmm. later. So it connects business leaders with students to let them know what the opportunities Mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And that is was started through the chamber. You, uh, if you listen to our episode with Granita Latham, we talked about the different programs that SPS is offering mm-hmm. in collaboration with OTC and MSU and the nursing program. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just it, it's starting to really evolve mm-hmm. and it's taken a long time to get here. And um, but it's so important that we do have we let our college students know they come here and I can tell you from experience I've talked to lots of students from St. Louis who come here because it's 
not that far from home, but mm-hmm. they do get outside of their backyard, right, when they mm-hmm. come to MSU or Drury. But eventually they go home. Mm-hmm. Well, what if we could keep them here? Right. What if we had the opportunity, the infrastructure, meaning broadband and and uh, all those things. And mm-hmm. when I talk about infrastructure, it's not just roads and bridges. Mm-hmm. It is access to, to high-speed internet right. and, and being able to adjo- do a job from anywhere in the country. Why not stay here right. and have the amenities that we have here, plus the low cost of living, mm-hmm. and be able to raise a family, like you said, and stay here and have a rewarding career. So I really feel like workforce development is probably the key, um, the first piece of that puzzle, mm-hmm. and then comes business attraction and all those things. Because if you don't have workforce, right. they're not going to come. Right. And that's another reason why it's important. If if Republic gets a win like Amazon, mm-hmm. it's not just a, uh, a win for Republic. It is a win for everyone in that 10 Sorry? county region and beyond, because I guarantee you there are people driving to Amazon sure. for a job that live maybe an hour away, you bet. maybe 45 minutes away. Yeah. So they have to pull from all the surrounding areas, which then that person who comes to work at Amazon goes home to where they live 30, 45 minutes away and they spend money in their community. And so it's just a, it's, it, it's a, it affects everyone. Right. If 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 we get a big win like Amazon, mm-hmm. um, it's a win for everyone in the ten county region. That's right. That's why regionalism truly is um, critical, and we're at a critical juncture. Um, which I think Tanya, we probably should go ahead and shift into some things that are happening now with regard to regionalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Speaking of the regionalism, so mm-hmm. me wanting to figure that out mm-hmm. and know a lo- mm-hmm. have a little more knowledge. So again, fishing around, starting with the Chambers website and then went to a Springfield, Missouri. I think it was Live in Springfield, Mo. I don't have it written on here, but something to that effect. Mm-hmm. They have regional partner communities on a map. Mm-hmm. And so it's easy for you to then, oh, now I can conceptualize this because right. I can see it with my eyeballs. Right. And they go as far north up to Bolivar and Buffalo, mm-hmm. go down through Springfield, Stratford, Battlefield, Republic, Nixon, Mount Vernon, Cassville, Kimberly City, Branson, then over to the east, Marshfield, Seymour, Rogersville, and into Ozark. So you can see on that map that, you know, they're not pushing move to Springfield. It's right. just about Springfield. It's about the whole region right. because we work in Springfield and all areas around here in those regions, the whole region we work mm-hmm. in, right? Mm-hmm. But I live in Nixa, Ozark mm-hmm. area, mm-hmm. and I commute in. So when we talk about the regionalism, and I think when you can picture it in your head and think, oh yeah, now I get it, mm-hmm. it makes a whole lot more sense. And then if you start taking all of those cities and talking about the greatest thing they have going on, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we don't need to focus on just one because Mm -hmm. there's so much great in, in all of them, really, everybody, every city has something going on and they're going to benefit from everybody working together Mm -hmm. to get workforce development Mm -hmm. and to get the big companies to come for a site visit here. Right. Because Republic like you said, is not the only one benefiting from Amazon. Right. Yeah. Um, There is, in mentioning those cities, there is a program at MSU, and I'm not going to attempt to tell the name of it, Mm -hmm. but it is a a department at MSU, and my friend Jane Hood works for this department. They are tasked with being part of, uh, being a being a partner with these cities and towns to help them develop a strategic plan. Okay. So I'm from Pleasant Hope. They came up, this has been years ago, and this is how I got really involved in in Ozarks Regional Economic Partnership when it was OREP into SREP. Um, We had, they sent somebody, they sent, this is a, a student program where they send students out to these towns and they do interviewing and they do, um, mapping and, and things like that. And then they go back to the town and tell them what they feel like is needed there. Okay. What is their greatest asset? How can they build mm-hmm. around that? Okay. 
and it's free mm -hmm. to the town because it's a, a student project. Right. Yeah. So that's how I got to know about the program, and I'll I'll try to look it up and put it in the show notes so that people know exactly what that's called at MSU. And if there's a town out there who still wants their help, they they still do that kind of thing. Got it. So um, the the partnership I got involved from a um, public side. I had just mm -hmm. started um, an economic or a chamber of commerce in Pleasant Hope. I was living okay. there at the time. I was chair. I start, helped start the the chamber, and I was the chair for a couple of years, just trying to get it off the ground. Yeah. And because of that, we were invited in to be a part of Ozarks Regional Economic Partnership, Got which it. then became Springfield Regional Economic Partnership, and I was the chair of that for a couple of years. So that's where my knowledge comes from. So okay. it wasn't because I was a realtor and sought that out. Mm -hmm. I was a member at the chamber, but really it came from these um, connections I had with regard to economic development because I had started a chamber. Okay. So, okay. so that was, you know, and when that started and, and we're going to talk about, um, something that was announced at the think summit mm -hmm. and here in just a minute. And, but I want to give our listeners that background that the people at the table were mostly from public entities. So there was a representative there from each of the surrounding towns. If they, if their town bought into, you had to right. pay to play. Yeah. So play to, yeah, pay to, pay play. to play. I got that right. Um, so, you know, so they were chamber representatives. They were city administrators. They were... Um, um, city managers right. in some cases. And around that table, there were like 25 people that represented all the 10 counties and the cities that were in those 10 counties. Okay. And we made decisions about, you know, we got a report on what, what site selectors were coming to town, um, when they could announce it. That's something that's really kept lock and key because they don't want anyone to um, spill the beans, so to speak, before the the company is ready to announce. That's that's their story to right, tell. Right. So um, so, but we would talk about those things. We'd talk about what was going on in each of our communities, and really, it was just um, a great opportunity for me um, to learn about what was going on in each of these towns and know what was coming and what projects were being worked on, okay. and um, make those connections. And we are going to talk to. Um, Dean Thompson mm -hmm. uh, in a in an episode here in a couple of weeks. Him and Aaron. This, I don't know. I, I'm gonna I I'm gonna butcher it. her name. Aaron, we can't Dan say her name yet. Dan Astagio. Dan Astagio. Okay. That's what I'm gonna say. She's okay. with the Hatch Foundation. Okay. Um, but Dean was part of that around the table at, at OREP when I was part of part of that. Okay. So, so he's been involved. So in he's been for a long, long time. Yes, he has a a long background in economic development okay. and he and Aaron are going to come on and, and talk about this new project that's going on. Yeah. So is there anything and, else you want to go ahead? Well, and the name of the project or the, mm -hmm. what are they calling themselves? A, um, it's a nonprofit organization. It's a 501 three C. Okay. Yeah. That they have started. Okay. And it's called lore. Mm -hmm. L O R E. Yep. And that was announced at the think summit. Yes. So, Again, just going to give a little background here. So you you go from you've got SREP still existing at the Springfield Chamber, right? Housed under a public entity, right? Another thing that the chamber does on an annual basis is they take a trip to a sister city, mm -hmm. something a town that a city that is close in size and demographic to our city, mm -hmm. and they try to come up with something that, what is that city doing that maybe we're not? So mm -hmm. the whole point of the visit is you take your chamber leaders, they go on this visit, and they get to see what's great about that particular town, and, and then what could we bring back to Springfield? Mm -hmm. One of the things that came from a leadership visit um, a few years ago was daylighting Jordan Creek in mm -hmm. downtown Springfield. Okay. So that was, I believe they had visited San Antonio or somewhere that has a waterway oh, okay. going through the city, mm -hmm. and so that's where that came from. So in 2022, this group of chamber leaders went to Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And Northwest Arkansas has a, a regional 
organization that is not housed under a public entity. It is privately funded. There are public people involved in it, so Mm -hmm. chamber people, city people, Mm -hmm. but it's not housed under that. So in my mind, that cuts the red tape um, because, you know, you've got these... You know, not to say anything bad about the chamber, but sometimes they would come back from these visits and people that went were really excited Mm -hmm. and they wanted to get things moving. But again, the chamber is part is a public entity. So mm-hmm. they've got red tape, they've got to follow, mm-hmm. they've got legalities, they've got sure. to work within and they'll and create a capacity a, as well. A, a, and a capacity Only certainly large enough. Yeah. yeah. So they create white paper. I can't tell you. I I don't have good feelings about white papers because in my mind when I hear that, I think, "Oh, we're not moving the ball forward. Instead of action, we've got to create a plan and then we've got to and not that there's anything wrong with that, but it can take years yeah. for things to move forward yeah. when you've got to get this this white paper approved and then you've yeah. got to go back and rework the white paper and you've got to put it out again and then you've got to get this group's approval on it and this yeah. group's approval whereas private entities can sometimes move faster right so they come back from northwest arkansas and there is tons of buzz i know lots of people who've gone on these visits i've never gotten to go on one but I know people that have, and Mm -hmm. I always talk to them when they come back. Mm -hmm. And there was something different Mm -hmm. about the visit to Northwest Arkansas. They were more energized than I've ever seen them. Mm -hmm. And And I think part of that is just the proximity To the Ozarks, you know, if Northwest Arkansas can pull it together, why can't we pull it together? I mean, they're a neighboring community. Our 10 10 counties butt up to Northwest Arkansas. So why can't we do it? And, and, you know, one of those things that happened almost immediately was Logan Aguirre, Mary Cromrie, and Paula Doherty, and among others, but those three I mentioned because Mm -hmm. they've been on the podcast. So um, they came back and they started. Um, Cycle Connect, because there's a big cycling group in Northwest Mm -hmm. Arkansas that's been around for for a long time, and it's a way to connect to people who have um, same interests and also get out and enjoy the great outdoors in that Mm -hmm. area. So why can't we create that? We've got the trail system. Why couldn't they create that? And they came back and they did. Mm -hmm. Then the other piece of that conversation was... You've got this private entity in Northwest um, Arkansas. Why can't we create that in Mm -hmm. Southwest Missouri? Right. And that's where lore came from. And it's leaders for regional evolvement. Okay. Is what that stands for. So they are in the in the process. They announced that at the Think Summit mm-hmm. that that's what they were going to call this nonprofit. And I don't want to get too much into it because Aaron and Dean will right. talk more about it. But just suffice it to say that there is an organization that has been started that will be private people at the at the table mm-hmm. to start, and obviously with with um, other entities involvement. But um, it's it's. It's a great concept, and it's something I just feel like, well, when we were talking to Erin earlier, she she used the word serendipitous. You know, Mm -hmm. timing is everything in Mm -hmm. these things. And and I feel like we've been, we've chugged along, we chugged along, we had had O-Rep, then we had S-Rep, and, you know, there's regionalism that's been talked about. But now I feel like the momentum is there Mm -hmm. to actually move forward. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you, and -hmm. and I think we can – leave it there Mm -hmm. and let Aaron and Dean come in. Mm -hmm. So in May, we're going to have a series of people on Mm -hmm. the podcast every week that Mm -hmm. are going to talk about these particular things, what is happening in Springfield with these nonprofit organizations, this new one especially, mm-hmm. um, and what are our, what's our chamber and what's CU in the city of Springfield, what's everybody working on, mm-hmm. and enlighten people and educate them so that they can then talk about it with their friends. Because yeah. I think that's how we all get better. Yeah. Like for myself, understanding it mm-hmm. and, and actually reading about it and listening to the conversation rather than just tuning out because I don't know anything about it. Right. It's, very, it's really exciting. It, it really is. And we're going to bring um, Christian County into that conversation uh-huh. as well. We'll do an interview with um, Kristen Hazeltine. Hazel who is with a Christian County group and they, you know, she'll give their perspective mm-hmm. and what regionalism means to um, a smaller 
county, you know, a couple of smaller cities there. Right. And it's not just Springfield. So we really hope that this has whetted your appetite to hear more about what's going on. That's right. the purpose of this particular episode, to just lay some groundwork yeah. and let you know that we've got more coming. And we hope that you'll tune back in to hear our interviews with those people um, in, in upcoming episodes. Yep. Okay. So let's wrap it up, Angie. Let's and wrap it up. we appreciate you listening. We thank Gershman Mortgage and we will catch you next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Simply Authentic podcast. Be sure to hit follow so that you can see each episode as it pops up weekly.